With Kyle Busch headed to the 8 car in 2023, and Tyler Reddick having already signed a contract with 2311 Racing for 2024, it seems impossible to not have questions about how serious everyone is about the idea of Tyler Reddick actually being in a third RCR car instead of a 2311 car or even a car for a different team next year. I made a video a couple of days before the official announcement that Kyle Busch was headed to RCR, and in it I said that I thought Tyler Reddick would not be back with RCR next year. My reason for believing this is because I have a hard time believing that RCR has the money to pay Kyle Busch the kind of salary he demands, pay Tyler Reddick, start and fund a third car, and buy a charter. Financially, it just doesn't seem to make sense. So, I was initially shocked when Richard Childress came out and stated that Tyler Reddick would be in a third, chartered, car for RCR next year. However, as I watched the press conference, I couldn't help but notice, every time Childress got asked about acquiring a third charter for Reddick, his answer seemed to soften. By the third time he got asked about it, it really seemed like he wanted to dodge the question and not commit to anything. Tactically, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to publicly announce that you will have a third charter next year without already having a deal in place to acquire one. There's an extremely limited supply of available charters for next year, probably only two, maybe three, and now you've already laid all of your cards out on the table before negotiations are finished. Whichever team you're negotiating with can now say, well, you've already told the world that you're going to make this happen and we don't have to sell it to you. So you're either going to pay a premium for it, or you're going to end up being publicly embarrassed after vowing that you would get a deal done and coming up empty. Long term, Childers probably wants a third car for Austin Hill. But if Kyle Busch can improve the team's performance and help bring in more financial growth and opportunity over the next year, and he'll likely won't be ready for Cup until 2024 anyway, why not wait until next year to acquire a charter? In the end, it would likely cost the team less money to simply buy out Reddick. Now you may say, well, 2311 would have to buy a new charter and fund a third car too. Well, yes, that's true, assuming that Kurt Busch comes back next year which Denny Hamlin has said is the intention, but they aren't going to have to pay Kyle Busch's salary, and they also haven't already laid their cards on the table. They could negotiate behind closed doors, and if they can't come to an agreement to acquire a charter, then just walk away from the table without any sort of public embarrassment or need to save face. Denny Hamlin, for his part, has said that 2311 does not have any plans to take on Reddick as a driver before 2024. So, no matter what happens at this point, there is no way that he or 2311 Racing come out with any sort of embarrassment. If Reddick is in a 2311 car next year, then they look awesome for having gotten their future star a year early. If not, then oh well, everything is simply going according to plan. No need to worry. Something tells me that Denny Hamlin and Richard Childress are simply playing hardball with each other right now. And at this point, Denny, by all appearances, has the upper hand in any sort of negotiated buyout. This is especially true given the fact that Denny Hamlin has said that they have contingency plans in place if Kurt Busch doesn't return to the 45 car next year, and those contingency plans don't necessarily involve Tyler Reddick. If you ask me, I don't think he's bluffing. Really quickly, before I get to what I think that plan may be, if you're enjoying this video, please consider clicking like and subscribe. It's free, and it really helps the channel out a lot. I think the contingency plan is to put John Hunter Nemechek in the car. Nemechek was reportedly the first choice to fill in for Kurt Busch before Joe Gibbs lobbied to have the seat given to Ty Gibbs, and Nemechek is slated to drive a 2311 car at a test session at Homestead this week. I personally believe that John Hunter Nemechek is going to be the eventual replacement for Martin Truex Jr., assuming that he retires after 2023 which I think he will. Having John Hunter spend one year at 2311 racing before sliding over to the 19 car at JGR makes a lot of sense. So what happens if there's a stalemate between RCR and 2311 and RCR isn't able to secure a third charter? Well, it's not unheard of for a driver in Reddick's position to spend one year at a different organization to fill the gap between teams for a year. Clint Boyer's year in purgatory at H. Scott Racing was a disaster, but 
Casey Kane actually performed pretty well during his gap year with Red Bull and actually managed to find victory lane once. If Reddick finds himself in a similar position, the most competitive team he can end up with is Colleg Racing in the 16 car. Colleg hasn't announced a driver, or drivers, for the 16 car next year, but they've previously announced that they want to announce one on October 5th. That may sound like they already have someone lined up, but if that were true, then why set the date so far out? If Reddick is going to be in that car next year and Colleg is going to meet its self-imposed deadline, then everything would have to come together in just the next few weeks which is pretty quick, but I wouldn't totally rule it out. Matt Colleg is an aggressive owner who likes to win. Even if Reddick were only with the team for one year, a driver of his caliber could still help the team grow tremendously in one year, especially given how young of a team it is and the fact that they're only going to be in their second full cup season. Also, Colleg does have a technical alliance with RCR already. Really, I think that that move would make a lot of sense for all parties involved. So where do you think Tyler Reddick ends up next year? Let me know in the comments and let's have some fun discussing. Please like and subscribe and thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.